Hello and welcome back to the Longtail Build series. This is video 6. In the last video, I remitered a bunch of tubes due to a drivetrain change. We then welded some test binders to a test C tube, and finally wrapped things up by making a custom set of dropouts. In this video, I will be silver brazing a test binder for the first time. Let's get started. I purchased 56% silver and some stainless light flux from Cycle Design. I'll have a link to their site in the description. Before I light this up, I first need a way to secure the binder in place while brazing it. I found this junk steel rod in my scrap bin, so I decided to try and use this. I'll sandwich this rod between two small blocks of aluminum and uh, one end I'll cut a V to hold the binder. You can see here that I've gone and cut a V on both ends of the block. I did this because I wanted the option to flip the holder to accommodate horizontal and vertically placed bosses. I ended up changing the design to something even simpler. I'll show you guys that here in a bit. Now for the end that will hold the binder down. pretty amazing how fast one can machine when there is no measurements involved. I'm just eyeing all of these cuts. All right, so I, I was going to make the tool so that I could flip it, but I changed the plan to a simpler design. Instead, I'll cut a horizontal and vertical Vs, uh, both on the same side. This allows the holder to secure horizontal or vertically placed bosses. Thank you. 
Now that I've changed the design, I only need a V on one side of the block. Okay, I'm sanding down the end of the rod so that I can press fit it into the block. Ready for brazing. I didn't flux inside the tube and I'm thinking maybe I should have done that. Uh, it being the end of the seat tube, maybe, maybe that would have been a good idea. And uh, I also realized later I should have used more flux. The orange smoke is coming from probably oil burning up inside the tube uh, because I didn't clean inside and had this been the real thing, absolutely you should do that and I should have done it anyway even though this was a test tube. You can see the drilled end of the binder got glowy orange and that was too hot. It should only reach a dull orange. So yeah, I burned it.
I uh, decided to stop because I knew I, I had burned the flux, so there was no point in continuing on uh, because the solder would not have bonded in that area. I soaked it in cold water, but then I remembered it should be hot water. And here's what I ended up with after washing the flux off. I got in there with a wire brush to see how badly it got burnt, and uh, it's not terrible, but not good either. You can see here the flux didn't flow on this side. Uh, let's do this again. Uh, this time I got liberal with the flux. I put it all over everything and uh, even inside the tube, although I don't think it matters much at this point since I already burned it up in there. <laughs> This time around, I was much more patient and I had the torch turned down to about half. Does the holder draw out heat? Um, so yeah, I was curious about this. I have that aluminum holder and it's on this tiny little uh, binder. And I'm curious if you guys know what your thoughts, I'm, I wanna know what your thoughts are, are on this. Do, um, do these holders draw the heat out of the part and then, you know, make it harder to braze, this being such a small part? Alright, I'm, I'm running this video at normal speed for anyone who has never seen this process before. Um, maybe I'm going a little too slow this time, but I didn't want to speed up or cut the video so that you guys who are new to this can see the the whole thing and uh, get an idea of how much time it takes. Maybe I'm taking too much time, I don't know. I think I'm heating this up too slowly and uh, maybe being a little too careful. Let me know in the comments if you guys think this is too slow. I want to thank Joe who suggested silver brazing the, the binder. I don't own an oxyacetylene setup and uh, this being my first time it seemed like a good first step without investing hundreds on a OA setup. Alistair uh, commented that silver is maybe not the best choice for brazing a seed binder because this part must withstand a good amount of stress. Uh, for things like cable bosses silver is totally fine but for the C2 binder I think only time will tell in this case. If I was uh, making a frame for someone outside the family, I would most likely, well, I would use something other than silver for peace of mind. But since it's for my kid, uh, if anything goes wrong, I can uh, put it back on there or use another form of another weld method. Uh, but for now, silver it is, and uh, since I'm using a map gas torch, I really uh, don't have much choice. It's uh, This torch will only melt uh, silver. At least that's what I read. So if you guys know of it doing anything more than that, like brass, uh, let me know. Alright guys, I'm gonna cut ahead. I know I said I wasn't going to do that, but this is super boring and uh, yeah, I mean what you're seeing right now is just what I'm doing for a pretty long time so I'm gonna cut ahead to the filler let's go I tried to melt the solder but uh, it wasn't quite hot enough Here you can see it's a dull orange. Sorry that my hand is in the way. I I couldn't move the camera while I was doing this. 
Uh, sorry, I, I mentioned dull orange and I didn't say if that was good or bad. A dull orange is actually a good thing and uh, anything hotter or like brighter is, is bad. You're gonna burn the flux. All right, we're done. Here is the uh, here's what it looks like, and uh, this stuff's really weird. It turns like a a glossy, shelly, glossy coating. <laughs> All right, so uh, I dropped my little holder in there. It got some stuff on it, so I'm gonna see if I can clean it up and. Uh, and the tube. So you only gotta let it sit in there like a minute and uh, it, the stuff just comes right off. The st stuff on the uh, the holder, it, it w didn't come off. It's like burnt on the end. So I gave up on that pretty quickly. And uh, then I just took this little toothbrush and scrubbed, scrubbed it. See there is like these little marks from the holder and uh, yeah that thing got really hot and it kind of burnt the aluminum and I couldn't tell if some of it got onto the the binder there my little dummy test binder there's those marks again after I, I took it out of the bath All right, here it is after I um, sanded it and uh, wire brushed it and cleaned it up. Now that the test binder is brazed, it is time for another slitting saw test. I tried this before and was not successful. It uh, turned out I was doing a bunch of things wrong. A big thanks to all of you guys for the great comments on that last video where I messed it up. Uh, thanks to you guys, we're gonna get this done right today. All right, this time around, I'm using a two and three quarter diameter by one sixteenth inch thick cutter, basically the same type of cutter, a slightly larger. It has uh, 72 teeth and it's made of high speed steel. Here's a look at the concentricity and it looks good right off the bat. This time around we're running the saw at around 90 RPM which was recommended by you guys. I'm using a water soluble cutting fluid with a spray bottle uh, and that's going to be used to keep things under control and well lubricated. Also recommended by you guys. Thank you. All right, so I have a little confession to make. I thought this would not work at all. I, 
I trust you guys and I trust your comments, but this time around, I really thought that none of that stuff was gonna work because I, I was like so sure that the mini mill just cannot handle um, uh, this, this sort of operation. It turns out I was totally wrong. It it really has everything to do with everything you guys said, which is uh, cutting speed, uh, the proper lubricant, making a conventional cut and not climb cutting, and um, also cutting a part that is not hardened from the welding process. Here's a look inside this slot and you can see that the solder flowed in there perfectly. And uh, here's the other side. Okay guys, that is all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and commenting. It's uh, obviously helped me out a ton. I would not have been able to get uh, the solder work properly without all of your help. So thanks guys. In the next video, I hope to finally get the real binder on the C-tube and start welding. I'm not totally sure how I'll slot the uh, final binder because uh, I can't slot it until I've reamed the tube and I can't ream the tube until I've welded it. So it's kind of a problem there, but we'll figure it out. All right, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you later.